In today's video, we will understand simple but very useful tricks to write Java code in clean and concise manner and also learn some best practices that must be followed. Let's get started. Let's suppose there is a method that accepts a string argument and checks if it is equal to some string and returns a boolean true or false accordingly. What most developers do is compare the strings using equals method inside an if condition and return true if they are equal and return false if they are not. This code will work perfectly fine but there is another way to write it in cleaner and concise manner. This statement that is equals method already returns the result of comparison as a boolean value which will be true if the strings are equal and false otherwise. So, why shouldn't we directly return the result like this? Now, we don't need this. Look how clean it gets. In this method, we are getting the argument string as a value and it could be anything, even a null. So, I can call it as. Now, when this code will be executed, this will not give a result but a null pointer exception since s will be null here. Let's run this. Look what we got. So, whenever you are comparing a string with a fixed value, always place the fixed value before equals. This code will return false, which is the correct value, but not an error. Run this. Works. If you have to perform multiple operations on a string, such as adding strings this way, then instead of a string, use string builder or string buffer objects along with their append method. Convert it to a string when required using its true string method. This is because each string operation will create a new string object since strings are immutable. This will result in creation of many objects and will consume memory. While string builder and string buffer are mutable and all changes are done to the same string value and no new object is created. Suppose you have a fixed value and you are using it at multiple places in different classes. Now, tomorrow, if this value changes, then you have no option but to go to each place and change it. A best practice is to create a constant class, define a static final variable and use it wherever required. This way, in case of a change, you will need to change it at one place only. Also, a standard practice is to define constants in all uppercase. Always use meaningful variable names which demonstrate their purpose such that another developer using your code knows what to pass. In this example, if someone wants to use this method, he or she doesn't know what this value represents. Changing the variable name to file path makes complete sense. This does not only apply to method parameters but also to local variables defined inside a method. What does this mean? While well, changing its name makes some sense. Always close resources such as file streams, readers, connection objects, etc. You might not realize but not closing them might make your code hang forever waiting for a database connection or getting file access. Secondly, do not close the resources directly. Always close them in finally block. Suppose there is some more code here and there comes an exception. The reader will remain open. Finally block is guaranteed to run, hence the reader object should be closed there. Also, before closing, check for it to be not null. This is because if the reader is null for any reason, close will raise a null pointer exception. The reader object is inside try block and hence not visible to finally move it outside try. Close method throws an IO exception, so we need to surround it with try catch block. Java 7 introduced a new try with resources statement where we define the resources after try and they are auto closed after the block finishes. Define this reader after try. Now we don't need this final block. So, the tip is to close resources after they use and this should be done in finally block or use try with resources. When we want a list with some elements, we normally define an array list and add the required elements to it one by one. This means that if there are four elements, then we need to write five lines of code to initialize an array list with those elements. Instead, we can simply use array list constructor and provide it another list created from an array using static arrays.asList method. Like this. So, five lines of code is reduced to one line. 
Java 8 introduced a static off method in list interface, which makes it more easier. Simply write list.off and provide the element separated by a comma. That's it. When iterating over a collection such as a list, we normally use the old for loop from 0 till the size of the list. And we get the current element using its get method and then use it. So we use two methods, size and get, to get each list element. Instead, we can use an enhanced for loop where we simply need to declare a variable of the same type as the collection. And that is all. The loop variable will automatically be populated with the list element in every iteration. We do not need to use size or get method. Simple, right? With Java 8, you also have an option to use for each method, where the current collection item is available as a lambda expression variable. That's it. When iterating over a map for both key and value, what we normally do is to get a set over the keys of a map using its key set method. Get an iterator over this set and then iterate using its has next method. In every iteration, we get its key using next method. And then to retrieve the value corresponding to this key, we pass it to maps get method. This is wrong since in the worst case scenario, it might end up in time complexity of ON. The better way is to get an iterator over the entry set using its entry set method. This returns an iterator of type map.entry, where each entry represents a key value pair of the map. Now the iterator will return an object of type map.entry. To get the key from this entry object, use its get key method. And to get the value, use its get value method. No computation is required to get the value. This will now have a complexity of O1. You must have heard of singleton class, a class which has only one object. Usually, to create a singleton class, we define a private constructor so that an object of this class cannot be created from outside using constructor. Define a private static variable of this class type. For creating an object of this class, we define a public static method whose return type is this class object only. Inside this method, we check this instance to be null and create it if it's null, then return it. When this method is called, this check becomes true since the object is null, but for subsequent calls, it will return the same object. But this approach has problems, such as when multiple threads access this method, there are chances that more than one thread enters into this block, resulting in multiple objects being created. To prevent this, we have to implement double check locking, making it more complex. Further, this method also breaks in serialization and deserialization where more than one objects are created. There is a more simpler and successful method to create singleton classes, which is using enum. Simply define an enum and a variable inside it. Enums are guaranteed to be singleton and thread safe by JVM. So, this variable will have only one copy. Now, you can use it anywhere with the name of enum and this variable and call its method. That is all on different best practices that you can follow to make your code more cleaner and optimized. Hope this was useful.